All right, time for the Oyster Boys freshman 15. I'm excited about this. Drew, I didn't know we are going 15 deep. I saw the rundown this morning. I said, all right, Drew's getting after it. Got a couple Celsius in him. I love your list. What I tried to do I know. is just not pick a name that you had. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The other thing I was curious about, was there any kind of like rhyme or rhythm to the positionals, or was it just like, let me go pick my favorite players? Well, I think, you know, last year we went – Conference by conference, team by team, and we, me and you both named one freshman we thought was going to play or make an impact, and we had some big hits. This year, due to obligations, a lot of obligations, we, we didn't have the opportunity to do that. So I thought freshman 15, which is you know funny play on when you start college, freshman 15. Um, <laughs> you know, like, hey, let's try to throw some names out here. Yeah, there's some obvious ones, but guys we've heard buzz on. Guys, when we look at the two deeps, um, you know, we think, okay, this kid's going to play. Just kind of trying to call our shots. And I, I was going to give you the – we could have doubled up. I, I wasn't trying to take all the good guys. But I, I thought it would be interesting, just some, some individuals we are buying stock in. So, All right, let's start with your team then. Uh, Producer Chris, if you don't mind, yes, thank you. The full screen graphic here. I know if you're listening over audio, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But if you're on YouTube, you have a good idea. All right, Drew's freshman 15. And for audio purposes, Drew, I'm going to go through all these. Okay, we got Jeremiah Smith, Cam Coleman, Brian Wesco, three extremely talented receivers. Colin Simmons from Texas, top 247 edge rusher. Dylan Raiola, Nick Marsh, big fan of Andrew Ivins. Xavier uh, Brown. Jordan Seaton at Colorado, Elijah Lofton, Jaden Jackson, DJ Lagway, PJ Woodland, been turning a lot of heads in Baton Rouge, DJ Warner from Kansas, love that. Day Day Farmer, receiver of West Virginia, and then Clemson's kicker, Nolan Hauser. Like that, snuck that one in there. <laughs> I like that. I like this list, man. I mean, it's 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 loaded. Um, the good thing about it is, is, you know, these are all guys that, I mean, obviously that's why we did the list. These are all guys that you would expect uh, to play early. One guy that I think, I mean, we've talked a lot about these guys. So let me just point out the guys that, in my opinion, we haven't really dished out on. Uh, Drew, and I'll give you the floor. Nick Marsh, I know you love at Michigan State. Elijah Lofton at Miami. I think we need to get ahead of that one. Jaden Jackson from IMG, you were plenty familiar with. He's going to get the start at Oklahoma on the defensive line. PJ Woodland, I got to see at Alabama, Mississippi. Uh, he's a guy, uh, might be one of the best players in that secondary already at LSU. Then DJ Warner at Kansas fired up about, and then Day Day Farmer at West Virginia. So the floor is yours. Just wanted to, as a friend, those were the dudes that I thought like, okay, you know, I hadn't heard those names in a while. Yeah. We don't need to talk about, uh, the big time wide receivers. I think Elijah Lofton is, is very interesting. You know, Miami is using him at running back a little bit talk to some people that have seen some practices there. They say this kid, they're going to get him involved and you can put the tweener label on him. You know, he doesn't have the prototypical size. I was actually standing next to him on the sidelines over the weekend. He went to see Bishop Gorman play and I'm like, Oh, this is Elijah Lofton. Like he is, he is stout. He's well, well put together. Cooper. I just think he's a, a really tough kid. Shannon Dawson. I think they're going to get creative. You know, it might not be this Saturday. Elijah Lofton's out there. Uh, but I think at some point during the season, he's going to have a big game. He's going to come up at a key moment. P.J. Woodland, interested. I want to pick your brain on him. You know, I think if it would, if it was up to some people in Baton Rouge, P.J. Woodland would be starting week one uh, against USC there in Las Vegas. I think they're trying to ease him in. Uh, but I expect by, you know, sep late September, early October, he's in that lineup. I think – there's some people at LSU that think he's the top corner they have on the roster right now. And that might speak to the level of talent. The good news, if you're an LSU fan, Corey Raymond has absolutely loaded up here in the 2025 class. But, Coop, I mean, do you remember P.J. Woodland? Like, you said you saw him at the Alabama-Mississippi game. I mean, he's a three-star prospect for us. Hey, three stars are still players. We're not going to get them all right. Uh, it seems like he has, I don't know, like evolved really, really fast there. Three stars are people too. You know, we say that all the time. Yeah, I saw him in Alabama, and Mississippi, and you know, he was he was a guy. Quite honestly, like you go into that event, and he's already committed to LSU, and you're kind of like thinking to yourself, like, all right, well, you're not looking at him through a different lens, but you're you're 
wondering to yourself, all right, or is this kind of match up with the level that I think an LSU defensive back should look like? And P.J. Woodland was a guy, when I saw him there in Hattiesburg, he was pretty slight, narrow of frame, really liked the reactionary traits, liked the way he got in and out of his breaks. He was an instinctual kid. Uh, but if you were to tell me that I thought that he would be getting significant snaps in week one against USC in a primetime game that LSU needs to win, I, I would, you know, I wouldn't call you crazy, but I'd be pretty surprised uh, about that. And I don't know if that says more about PJ Woodland or more about LSU's secondary. My feeling is it says a lot about both. Um, so, you know, Woodland's a kid that I liked. Uh, we'll see what happens and kind of how that turns out. But uh, I know they love him there. And I think from from what we've gathered, I think he's surprised some people in that building as well, right? It wasn't like, all right, we're going to get this guy on campus and he's going to be in this position. So uh, credit to him a lot. All right, Drew, you ready to take a look at mine? Oh, one more. I, I want to highlight one more guy. Okay. Jaden Jackson at Oklahoma. Uh, you know, we moved him into the top 247 late after a senior eval. Every time I was at IMG Academy, Jaden Jackson's the guy. Jaden Jackson's the guy. He's the alpha. He's the dude which was notable because the person next to him was David Stone, who also signed with Oklahoma, who was also there and is not listed as a starter. So I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, I've been trying to think through that, you know, why Jaden Jackson? I just think it's it's the toughness. I think it's the mindset. Um, he's a go getter. Uh, he's a he's a leader. And then you look at a kid like David Stone, who, I mean, his recruiting process, Cooper, it was all over the place. I mean, I remember at one point we were there for like pro day and he wouldn't name the top schools he was considering. It's like, man, you've been going, you've visited Oklahoma, I think 48 times here since you were a freshman. You're going to tell us Oklahoma is not a top school. So uh, that was interesting. Uh, two more, Nolan Hauser at Clemson. They had major kicking issues last season. He was my number two ranked kicker. He's going to make a big one at some point. And remember this. You're going to be like Andrew Ivan said it on the 24-7 Sports College Football Recruiting Show. Nolan Hauser is going to hit it. And then the last one, Day-Day Farmer, wide receiver for West Virginia. I keep reading uh, camp reports about this guy. You know, they, they play Penn State. I don't know if it's going to be week one but they are excited about him late flip from UCF. So those that's, that's my freshman 15. I had a bunch of honorable mentions, but we don't have time for that. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Uh, Belchi, let's get to my list and uh, Drew, I guess, well, hold on. Let me read it uh, for those of you at home uh, listening via podcast, Ryan Williams, Alabama, TJ Moore, Clemson, Ryan Wingo, Texas, Dylan Stewart, um, South Carolina, all four of those guys, five stars, low hanging fruit there. Damon Williams, Love Washington, this. Jordan Ship, North Carolina, Marcellus Williams, USC, Kevin Haywood, Wisconsin, Christian Bentonker, Clemson, William Eccles, Ole Miss, Nate Frazier, Georgia, Jalen Mbakwe, Alabama, Amaris Williams, Auburn, Malcolm Simmons, Auburn. Drew, your thoughts? Any anything stand out to you? Well, you're leaving Terry Bussey off the list. Oh, my bad. Bussey at 15, athlete. You put the specialist there uh, at number 15, so I snuck him in. Yeah, 15, well, he, Terry Bussey. He, Bussey's not on AM's depth chart that I read last night while watching The Bachelor. Um, <laughs> but I, about? Think, I think he's going to play, right? Uh, I, I would hope so. Yeah, he might be an all purpose type of selection. What, what jumps out to me? Talk to me about Damon Williams because I really wanted to put him on mine. I had DJ Lagway, Dylan Riola on there. I think he is the true freshman quarterback no one is talking about that could make some. Uh, big splash like if we get to November let's say and Washington is you know fighting for bowl eligibility I, I think he's won they had more roster turnover than the majority of uh, programs around the country I think that plays into it Will Rogers there from uh, the, from Mississippi State the transfer and I think if they play their cards right they're in a really unique position to have Will Rogers kind of navigate the first half of the schedule and then once the expectations kind of drop off in that second half of the season, I think you can start getting Demon Williams some run in a similar way uh, that they did with Noah Fafita there in Tucson and getting his feet wet. So I kind of see the succession plan already in place. I think they're fired up about Demon Williams. I think Demon Williams is kind of a, a special cat, unique in the way that uh, he should be able to kind of handle the pressure of playing earlier. You're not going to rattle him 
or mess up his mental makeup going forward. So I think um, Jed Fish is one of those guys always kind of thinking ahead, big picture wise. And I think Damon Williams is going to get some run. I don't think we're talking about him here in August, but you know he was a guy that was kind of pushing there in the spring. Um, Drew, I like the kid. I think he's a total gamer. I don't really look any further than the success that they had with a similar quarterback in Noah Fafita. I just think it makes way too much sense. Uh, all right, Dylan Stewart, I agree. like that pick. Edge rusher, South Carolina. Now they return some talent there. But did you see, Cooper, Josiah Thompson is apparently going to start at left tackle for the Gamecocks. He has – He's listed with an oar next to Tree Babalade. I guess Shane Beamer said on some radio show Monday night that they're likely going to start a true freshman at left tackle. I'll say this about Josiah Thompson. Saw him at the Shrine Bowl. Technically buttoned up, kid. Everything you're looking for in a left tackle, he was just lean. Surprised the Gamecocks are going to roll with him, if we're, being, if we're being frank. They might not have an option. I mean, their offensive line hasn't really been that good. You know, uh, and Josiah Thompson's everything that you want from like a physical traits standpoint outside of the frame a little bit, you know, and that's going to be the biggest thing once they get in the SEC play. How's he going to hold up physically? Because I think he was hovering around 275, 285. Uh, that's a lot to ask of that kid to go into SEC ball uh, and be your corner protector for Lenora Sellers. It's been kind of a sneaky big year for Shane Beamer. You know, uh, so that's a lot riding on it. Uh, kid's going to be a heck of a player. Just I kind of thought he was like two years in the weight room, get him beefed up, and then we'll see what he looks like for him to be playing early. It's a it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a stunner. Um, but I also wonder how much like the you know the NIL stuff kind of plays into this, right? Like I got an or next to his name. I'm paying this guy a bunch of money, like you said. Like yeah, we kind of we got to show that we're kind of invested in this dude and he might be ready to play, you know? So I don't know. Uh, um, talk to me about it, yeah. Nate Frazier, Nate Frazier, right? I think, I think everyone is going to turn on the TV Saturday. You're going to watch game day or uh, the CBS sports new pregame show. And then you're going to get to that, <laughs> that noon game, Clemson, Georgia. And I think Nate Frazier is a guy that could get a carry in the, in the first quarter. Right. Yeah, more than that. I mean, I think they're going to have to rely on them, right? I mean, they're they're banged up in that running back room. ETN probably not going to play. Roderick Robinson uh, has been banged up. You got Branson Robinson, who's very different than Nate Frazier. Um, and then you got Nate Frazier, uh, who's Mighty Mouse. You know, I mean, I, I, what is he, Drew? 5'8", five, 5'9", five, uh, but he's rocked up. Uh, run sub 10'7", he can go. You know, he was playing in the backfield last year with Jordan Davison. Uh, at modern day where Davison was the guy, Nate Frazier was always the guy that your eyes gravitated to. Big play waiting to happen, plays bigger than his frame. Uh, you can utilize him uh, out of the backfield as a receiver as well. Yeah, he's he's a guy ready to play. They're fired up about him in, in Athens. Uh, it's going to be a, a big test, you know, his first test coming against a, a like a very, very good uh, Clemson defense and, and one of the most talented front sevens in the country. Um, neither of us had Luke Reynolds. I feel like that's a disappointment. The Penn State tight end. Gosh, that is a disappointment. James Franklin kind of uh scared me away a little bit. They're just so good there. Yeah, they're good at that position. You know, I I, I can actually see him uh, ripping off the red shirt. You know, playing six, seven games, um, and then seeing a lot more well, of them as a sophomore. Is there any point in redshirting these kids these days? Well, Just give me a the reason. The roster movement, like a guy like Luke yeah. Reynolds, like just play. Yeah, if you, th if you if you if you think he can play and help your team, then play him. <laughs>